Brethren, praise the Lord. It's again continuation of what we started on the book of Judges. We thank God for every opportunity. This is another one. And now we talk about another man from the word of God. Maybe what he did, whatever he went through, can inform us in our decisions that we make, in the strength that we go out with, and the actions that we exhibit. And the person that we talk about now is called Samson. Samson, another judge in Israel. And he comes under circumstances that are not good also, because we are going to read through and see how he came. But God raised men and women to do his work variously, like he does raise men and women in our lives, in our, during our situation, during our generation, that do lots. But they come from diverse backgrounds. So something is another man that we think about. And we pray that the Lord will give us good time to think together, pray together, and continue in his service, even while we're still in this body. Now, this man, Samson, his meaning, the meaning of his name, like I said, Hebrew names, having looked through the dictionaries and things like that, it is means distinguished, strong, and some others say that like the sun. And so he had, this name had a meaning. So he comes into the footsteps of his predecessors that had led the people of Israel after maybe they have sinned, after God has, you know, has left them on their own because he left them on their own because they were doing things in their own sight that seemed right for them. And so God would leave them for a while. And whenever God would leave them for a while, it would mean suffering, it would mean disaster. And so we pray that God enables us to see what Samson did or went through, how he came, that we can pick our own lessons for our life. And in the book of Judges chapter 13 is when we see him coming to picture, but first his parents, a man and a woman. And the Bible says, and the people of Israel again, this is how it begins every, after every generation, after every generation, this is how it begins. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Now the enemy country, the enemy nation now is not the Amorites, not the, um, the, 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 the Jebusites, not the, you know, the others, but it is now the Philistines, 40 years. And so there was a certain man in his aura of the tribe of Dan, they were called the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. So this nameless lady is the wife to Manoah, and the Bible said actually there was barrenness in the house. Of course, we were talking about barren people already. We talked about Abraham. Okay, they spent time with his wife, Sarah, no children. We've talked about, we, we in the Bible talks about Penina and, um, you know, the mother of Samuel, uh, Hannah. You know, Hannah was a barren woman and several others, Elizabeth, named them. Now, this one, the wife of Manoah was similar woman without baby. And so verse 3, the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren, and have not born children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. This is the good news. There are situations that you can be in, and you think that's impossible. There are situations that you can be in, and you think that actually, that, you know, that your energies, your efforts are first spent, but God comes at his own time, and he brings the good news. And here the angel of the Lord brings the good news to the woman, the mother, who would be the mother to the boy 
who would be born in Manoah's house and said, you'll have a son. And verse 4, he gives instructions. He said, therefore, be careful and drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean. Because of whatever would happen, whatever the mother would do would affect the, you know, the nature of the child. And verse 5, for behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. And he shall begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Now listen to me. This is the point that how can this son will become a Nazarite. A Nazarite, the local, one of the local languages, they call him Muonge, the one who had been dedicated, dedicated to the service of God, separated for the work of God. And so from before he is conceived, he's already separated. And this one gives us a point. Like when God called Jeremiah, what did he say? He told him that before you were born, I knew you. Before you were conceived, I already knew who you were. And so this is, before Samson comes, work is his specifications, his job specifications had already been given. How he would be treated had already been given. No razor should pass over his head. Because I mean, I mean he is dedicated to God's service. And no drink, no strong drink, no nothing like that. And he tells, he gives the instructions to the parents, he gives instructions to the mother to be careful in how to deal with herself, with her life. And so this is very important. And as parents, even in, a, in the normal life, a mother who is expecting, a, a, a pregnant mother, there are precautions that they need to take so that the baby in the womb it develops and grows well. The habits of eating, types of foods that should be eaten, and things actually, the, and the habits that can, that can damage the fetus need to be avoided. And so in normal life, this was something that the angel brought to the woman before, before this boy would be born. But now he is actually uh, promised. And the man in verse 8 also, because the angel came to the woman, he said, I also want to see. And then he prayed in verse 8. And the Manoah said, when he had received the message from the wife, he said, oh, Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us and teach us what we are to do with the child who will be born. And he was anxious. He needed to know what to do with the baby. And this is uh, the, man, the man now saying, praying, trusting God. And now in verse 9, God listened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of the Lord came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah was hard, but was not with her. So she rushed. And this is actually something that actually kept looking at it. said, now, Manoah is the one who is asking. But the angel comes to the woman and, you know, it kept like that. And of course, actually, God does his things very slowly. And um, she ran quickly and told her husband, behold, the man of God has come again. And so she came and the angel continued specifying what the child would be from verses uh, 10, 11, 12, following, following, following. And then um, what we needed to, to dive ourselves into here is what we learn from Samson. But before we get there, there are things actually we need to, you know, to know that actually he was eventually conceived and eventually he was born. And in verse uh, 24 of chapter 13, Judges, and the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the young man grew and the blood blessed him. When you bear a child, the child must grow. A child who does not grow becomes a disgrace. But a child that grows is a blessing. And so this boy grew. And other children that we have seen, we have seen how Samuel was born. And the Bible said that he, was, he grew up in favor with God and with the people. We look at the children, our other little babies that were born, like John the Baptist, that he grew up gaining favor with God and with the people. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself, that he grew up gaining favor with God and with the people. 
So we pray that actually we all gain favor with God and with the people. And so Samson grew up and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord came, began to stir him in Mahane Dan between Zora and Eshtaol. And so he started doing the work, but the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Remember, we ever talked about the man Jephthah, that the spirit of the Lord was upon him and he became a mighty warrior. Now this one, Samson, the spirit of the Lord, descended upon him and he became a mighty warrior. And so in this chapter 13, we read about this man. And I just got encouraged and energized to think about the man, Samson. And he's well known as the strongest. He's well known for his relationship with the woman Delilah, which we're going to very, very briefly talk about also. But we see him being raised from barrenness, he comes and he becomes a man who delivers Israel from the enemy. And God kept raising these men and women to point the people to the way. And even in our time, we pray that God will continue raising up men and women to point the people to the way. Generations keep coming and people come with their own ideologies. But we pray that the Lord who raised Samson, the Lord who raised Jephthah, the Lord who raised many others that we have talked about and those that we are continue talking about, that we continue raising more even during our generation. And you could be one of them. You will be, you are one of them. That actually God can use to bring salvation to your family, salvation to his people, salvation to his church. And so just very, very quickly, if you think that, that exhibited that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Samson and he was a very strong man, he did a number of things that many million people we have read about and we shudder. And this is like in chapter 14, we read about him meeting a lion. Chapter 14, verses 5 to 6. So Samson went down with his father and mother and to a place called Timuna. And the Bible says that okay, the lion came roaring. And Samson, listen to me, verse 6, that the spirit of the Lord rushed upon him. I like the way it is put, that the spirit of the Lord came rushing upon him, quickly possessed him. And although he had nothing in his hands, he tore the lion into pieces as one tearing a young goat, a lion. He did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Now, this is, um, of course, actually, we keep looking at biblical truths, and this is another one. So this is one of the acts that showed that the Spirit of the Lord came rushing. And we pray that the Spirit of the Lord comes rushing upon us. Every time that actually, the, the, the things that God wants us to do, the Spirit of the Lord will use us. And so the Spirit rushed upon him. And in chapter this chapter 14, Verses 5 to 6, he tells the lion. And chapter 14, verse 19, the Bible talks about him. You know, there was 30 people, there were men of the city of Ashkelon that came. They wanted, you know, and he struck them alone, a single man. That is, these are chapters that we read and we get encouraged. That even while you are alone, God can use you. Even when you are in a situation that actually you are not many, but God can, God can use you to do greater things in his name. And he did use Samson to do the same. At another point in chapter 15, verse 5, we read about him setting fire on the grain of the Philistines. They were a strong nation, but he used, he had his magic there. He using, um, you know, um, in verses 19, he used the, um, his, his, his tactics and he burnt down the fields. And that was an act of uh, bravery, being brave, to do something to the enemy, to provoke them. This was something that was great. And then he was bound by ropes, with ropes by over 3,000 people from Judah, his own tribe. They said, the Philistines will come and destroy us, want to tie and hand you over to them. They tied him with ropes. But listen, that in 
when he, he reached, they handed him over, and when the Philistines came, that actually the, the ropes were like thread in the fire. And he dealt with them a blow. Using a jawbone, he crushed all of them, and um, he destroyed them. And the jawbone of a donkey, and he destroyed over 1,000 people, the enemies. The Spirit of the Lord again came rushing upon him. And so, God provides for Samson water to drink. And a miracle comes that the Lord split open the hollow place. And there's a way God provides for his people. He provided for Samson water. He will provide for you. From the ground, he provided. And it was all wonderful. And these are some of the things. But his downfall comes through a young lady called Delilah. And this we read in chapter 16. So he saw, uh, but before we go to Delilah, he saw a certain woman. He saw a prostitute. And he went to her. And, um, you know, it was, this is how his downfall begins. And um, seduced into lots of things and he became he lost his victory lost his life and so from most of from these judges we see them doing great things even biblical great men david was a great man solomon was a great man but there were things that you could see because of the human nature that they fell from the grace from the grace of the lord and so we take our own lessons we learn that humanly speaking we can fail but god can still use someone. He used Solomon. I mean, he used Solomon, yes. He used David, yes. And now this time he used Samson. And with his weaknesses, he failed, all right. But God uh, still picks up people to use them in, them in his ministry. So a few lessons, very, very quickly, that I want to, to put to us, that physical strength is important. And I pray that actually each one of us gets physical strength. That our bodies strong and good. Samson was, could lift things. You need strength to lift something. You need strength to dig. You need physical strength to split firewood. You need physical strength to carry one chair from one place to another. You need physical strength to sweep. You need physical strength to do lots of things. But also, in addition to physical strength, you need spiritual strength to discern things, to know which one is right, which one is good, which one is not good. And actually you please God. And so Samson was a strong man. The strongest actually we ever hear because he did lots of exploits for the Lord. Physical strength, what I'm saying is good. And we need it. We, need, we eat food to get physical strength. We drink water to get physical strength. And so that we can be able to move. Even walking, you need strength. I'm preaching here. I need strength. Physical strength is good, but spiritual strength actually will guide us. The point of discernment here is important. That as we have a physical strength, we need to have discernment within us to know what is right and what is not right. That's point number one. We need to be all around physical strength, but also spiritual strength and in other areas. Well, even academic strength, you need it. Those who study, those who read, we need to be alert upstairs. And so that we remember things, you need Strength, emotional strength to, to help yourself to stand emotionally. You need, you know, whatever it is. But physical strength, I mean, I mean spiritual strength is important. Discernment is more important. Now, one other thing that actually we get from Solomon, I mean from Samson, from Samson. Beware of people that come into your life pretending. And then for beware of pretenders especially in love matters and indeed on all matters of life. And the Bible over and over again, our Lord Jesus Christ kept talking about who are the pretenders. The language that the Lord Jesus Christ uses, the pretenders are the hypocrites. Someone pretending to be one thing when he's not, pretending to be what he is not, pretending to be what he, she is not. Delilah appeared in the life of, Solo, of Samson as a wonderful lady. Beautiful, yes, but she was enticing him, enticing him to do wrong. And indeed, because of her, Samson 
fell. And so in chapter 23 of Matthew, you'll get there and read, there are about 30 verses, but about hypocrites, 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 hypocrites. And sometimes some of them are highly placed, you know, in our circles. But here, Jesus Christ warns us to be aware of the hypocrites. So you need the spirit of discernment, my brother. Like as Simon Peter in the Bible, in the Acts of the Apostles, discernment to see that actually someone is deceiving, someone is lying. And so that you don't follow liars, but you move on, you know, and uh, serve the Lord in faithfulness. So God calls us to holiness, live a holy life, as he himself is holy. Be transformed, my brother. Be transformed, my sister. The Nazarites were people that were set apart. We too are set apart. Abaule, set apart. And so we ask God to enable us to live according to our separatedness. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 to 18, tells us actually, separate yourselves, separate yourselves from, uh, you know, uh, the, from them. And so we are called upon to be set apart. Now, one other thing that actually you'll remember from about Samson is that actually God gives us freedom to choose or to make choices like Samson did, but we are not given a chance of freedom to make choices from the consequences. The choice that you make, the thing that you do, has consequences, and that one has, there's no freedom there. You choose to do something, be ready for the consequences. So beware of the consequences of the actions that you take. Samson did the same. He was a great man, but there was something like that. So Samson's choice of Delilah, the woman, leaves us with lessons, and eventually his hair was shaved, and he became as common as anybody. When the Philistines came, they destroyed him, they caught him, and the Bible says that they took him Read on, and you'll see this chapter 16, and you'll see that actually he was taken and <laughs> that he was, they made him a slave, a grinder, using his energy. But one fortunate thing that God is a God of another chance, pray the Lord. God is a God of another chance. Another chance came when his hair grew and he became stronger. And the Bible says actually that on that fateful day, very many people collected themselves and while they were there and thinking that actually Samson was now entertaining them, he said, bring them, bring him to entertain us, bring him to entertain us. And on that day, over 3,000 people gathered and he said, now, oh God, let me die with these Philistines. And holding his hand on one side of the pillar, one pillar of the temple, and then he collapsed with all of them. Now God gives another chance. Now there are moments when maybe you might have gone astray, and you think that your God has binned you. Binning means you have been thrown into a dustbin. Before God, there's no dustbin. God has open hands to welcome everyone. They come back. You sinned, but come back. You went astray, but come back. So Samson did whatever he did, but he gives us lessons. He leaves us lessons. And so may God enable you, may God enable us to see the strengths that we have so that we work for God. God is the supplier of our abilities, and so may he supply, like he supplied to Samson, may he supply to you. And may he enable you to live your life a strong man. Be strong physically, but also be strong spiritually. Have the spirit of discernment, and you live your life. So that actually God will be pleased with what without you do. Finding him is finding life. And so may God keep you and provide for you, and all of us, learning from these men and women from the Bible to find God. And so that during our time, there will be something written about, about us. There will be something spoken about us that actually during their time, they did this. And may God keep you and provide for you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.